So in terms of the 40 series launch so far uh, for 4080, we've only talked about the Founders Edition card. Today, we're gonna go ahead and talk about one of the custom cards, a card that I think might be one of the more cleanest, the more, more cleanest? The more clean aesthetic, um, kind of a little bit different than everything else out there. And I know some people are probably like, wow, 4080 is terrible, why are you even talking about it? Well, because guess what? Millions of people are still buying it and you're here watching this, so you're at least somewhat interested. Hey, Day. Day. Mm. Day. What? We got work to do. Yeah. I'm playing World of Warships. Yeah. World of Warships is the free to play naval strategy game where you command the most iconic and famous warships from World War I and World War II recreated with stunning detail and accuracy. Build your fleet while participating in various game types while upgrading your ship's arsenal along the way. New players who sign up using my link below will receive an exclusive starter pack to get you up and running quickly by receiving 7 days premium time, 1 million credits, 300 doubloons, and the tier 5 premium ship, the Exeter. So what are you guys waiting for? Start sinking ships with World of Warships by heading to the description below and getting your freebies. So this is the RTX 4080 from Zotac. Um, it's the Aero, Aero, A-I-R-O, Aero. So anyway, uh, it's a pretty interesting aesthetic. Uh, so far, as you can see by looking at the box before you've even unboxed it, I haven't even looked at this card yet. It has a little go handle, everything's kind of funny, you know, whatever. Um, in terms, of, in terms of the marketing, it's interesting. So it's a 16 gigabyte card, as we already know, because they got rid of the fake 4080 already. It's Ice Storm 2.0, but also Firestorm. I just, some of the marketing buzz terms and stuff, like I think Zotac makes a great product, they really do. I really do. I, I just, I feel like some of these, I think some of the marketing terms and stuff that brands have used have gotten a little disconnected from reality. And just, 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 just go back to making can you just put good? Can you just brand it as good? I don't know, we have good features? I don't know. Anyway, okay, a little rant over. Um, I'm very thankful for them sending me this card to take a look at. It's just, you know, obviously it's got all their techs on there. And which, what they're referring to there is a lot of the built-in features of either the cooler design and the software design and all that sort of stuff. Um, moving forward, opening it up, it's got like a, a flap. Normally graphics cards, like this is like motherboard packaging because normally they don't have a flap. This is extra. You know what, I'm not gonna lie, the packaging on this is actually really nice. Like I could see somebody putting this on like display. Love gaming, power the win. See, this is what I'm talking about when I said before slogans need to stop. It's like, it's like Google Translate, I don't know. It's just power the win. Okay, continuing to dig deeper into the box, we finally get to the card. And I said it wasn't massive, I lied. It is huge. Just the box itself isn't massive. I, You know, one of the things I've liked about this card when I first saw it in the imagery is I kind of like the, the swooshy lines of it. It's not just a square, or it's not just square with a bunch of lines in it. It's actually very, and I understand why they call it Aero. It's, a, it's obviously the uh, Amp Extreme, but the Aero is almost like, it's, a, it's kind of a play on words. A-I-R for air is an airflow and lots of it. And A-E-R-O, which is like aerodynamic. I feel like they just put the two words together and that's how we get the aero. Um, anyway, we'll set this aside. As we know, the RTX 4080 power adapters from NVIDIA are a three um, eight pin, not a four, because these cards are specced up to 450 watts. And so, and, and so are the 4090s, but the 4090s technically have the full 600 available to them if the manufacturer so desires. Um, the 4080s, not so much. Most of them are only going to about 500 watts overclocked or custom BIOS, so or OC BIOS and such, of which they include. That's why the three pin instead of the four. And then we get, what is this, guys? Is this a bracket? Yeah, it's their, it's their little GPU stick. This is their little like stilt system, which I came up with, which is designed and only gonna work if you have, like let's say this is your case, right? There's your graphics card. It's only gonna work if you have a separator plate or some sort of a mid plate between your power supply and your graphics card because it's only that long. So if you have one of those cases that's just open all the way to the bottom, that's not gonna work. So I wanna point that out. What we're gonna do is we are going to hook there's this really neat kind of a pearlescent effect 
on this. And I really hope the camera can pick this up. Aw, oh, so that sticker left residue on the back plate. We have to clean that off. Also too, because this is a review sample and not a retail sample. Remember this comes from like early production samples. Um, it's got this pink sticker on here. It says not for resale. So yours won't have that. Trust me, that's ugly. I usually peel these off anyway, cause they look terrible. So we've got the Zotac logo right here, which I'm assuming lights up. We've got the G-Force there. We've got that live to game slogan, which, you know, I've, I have fought brands for a long time. Stop putting color, like stop shoehorning colors down your throat when it comes to their aesthetics. Now they're like, fine, we'll just slogan the crap out of it. Anyway, this is the side that you'll see more than likely if you have it in a standard horizontal position. So that back plate would be visible to you. You can see it is a full three slot card. Um, technically it overflows into the fourth slot. So at that point, all effects and purposes makes it a four slot card. You wouldn't put anything here anyway, like a sound card or a capture card, because that would just choke off airflow to those fans. If you are vertical mounting it, this is what you will see. Again, I think it's a nice design. I really do. When I saw the initial designs um, come out, cause it looks exactly like the 4090 by the way, the 4080 and 4090 look exactly the same. Um, I like this just sort of a smooth, like this just, it's just clean looking. And if you take a look at it from this angle, it's got that neat kind of a purpley goldy pearl sort of built into that. Anyway, it does have um, a bio selector toggle button, which is right here next to the 12 volt high power. And I also like that the 12 volt high power is um, like surface mounted. Well, not surface mounted. It's like even with the PCB rather than being recessed. A lot of them will do a little cutout to get it lower. This will still be a more somewhat difficult one to unplug simply because of the fact that um, the clip is on the side facing the fans and not down like that. So you might have a hard time getting your thumb in there to release it. This is the kind of stuff that leads to power connectors not being plugged in all the way, which is what Steve found is the most common cause of them melting is user error. So make sure it clicks in all the way. And then after it clicks, push it down more. Cause I actually found with my cards, it'll click before it's fully seated. So that's probably a problem in itself. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna throw this on the uh, test bench right now, or at least the test system. And I'm curious as to how much, uh, what's it gonna boost to on its own? Cause that's what's really different between all the AIBs. They've kind of got their own ideology about where the base power limit should be. What does it boost to out of the out of the box? And then last but not least, temperatures and how far was I able to manually overclock both the RAM and the GPU. The lighting on it, very tasteful. The edges are lit. The PCB is actually lit from between the, the back plate and the PCB. So there's lighting on the back side or the inside of the back plate lighting the PCB, which actually looks really nice. The Zotac logo lights up like I said it would. The back has this sort of a, I don't know, almost like a hyperdrive looking sort of effect to the, to the, I, the card looks exactly as I had hoped that it would. Um, I think it's funny that the, the GeForce RTX doesn't light up because all NVIDIA graphics cards are required to say GeForce RTX on the side, but they're not required to light it up. I, this to me looks like, it's, a, it's, like, a, it's like a Federation starship. Okay, or something you would see in Star Citizen. It is such a neat looking card. It, it kind of makes me, when I look at cards, I feel like they're often the center focal point of a system. And I start to think of like, what kind of mods could you do to, to really tie this in as a theme? And that would definitely be like a Star Citizen type of a build. Um, anyway, moving on, I do have my four connector plug plugged into this, by the way, because it's the one I use on the test bench. And also too, if you see the giant activate windows, this is a test bench with how much hardware gets switched around, no matter how many times I try and activate it, it's always gonna tell me to reactivate and it's gonna say I can't because of the fact that hardware's changed too much and wants me to buy a new key. So I'm not going to buy a new key every time I go to do a review. So I just wanted to point that out. But anyway, moving on, the downside about the cable is the placement of it because the PCB is uh, only about, what? Three quarters of the length of the card is it comes out in a spot that just is ugly. It, it gets in front of the card, which is where all the lighting and stuff is. And that's just a downside of, unfortunately, of all the 40 series cards. Moving on, here we are in Afterburner. Now, Zotac would definitely say use their software. Um, I just use Afterburner because of the fact that it still accesses all of the tuning capabilities of the card because of the way that the, bio, the V BIOS reads off what is accessible. So MSI Afterburner is my tuning utility of choice. If you wanna control the colors on the card, 
then you have to use their particular software. Anyway, idling at 28C, it is an open side panel right now. I just have the side panel open because I wanna test the card's cooling capability, not my case's capability of keeping the card cool. Our power limit though, check this out. It's 100% right now. And with whatever BIOS is enabled, because I didn't change the BIOS, this is out of the box, 140%. This card could potentially pull 600 or has access to 630 watts, which is like, I don't know if because I have the four pin connector plugged into it, because I'm using the 4090 one, uh, if it somehow gave more availability to it. So what I'm gonna go ahead and actually do real quick is I'm gonna shut down the system and I'm gonna unplug one and I'm gonna see if that slider changes. There's also this really neat startup effect where it has a red light that kind of goes like bloop, 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 and then it turns on, it's pretty cool. So we're on, you can see right here, one of the plugs is absolutely not plugged in. So I'm curious now as to if that slider changes at all. Nope, it's the same. So that's, uh, that's asking a lot. Let's talk about the cooler, the fan cooler. It is at 30% on right now. And yep, they are running. So uh, what it, the BIOS that's enabled right now is clearly not a zero dB BIOS. I do believe it to be an overclocking BIOS. Out of the box, I think you should have all the overclocking features enabled in a card. I think the second BIOS should be nothing but a backup. Honestly, if something corrupts in your main BIOS. Um, oh, there it goes, there is zero dB. So it is a zero dB mode. So let's go ahead and now go to 50% fan speed and see if my lab can pick it up. I'm about a meter away. I can barely hear it with my ears, so I know you're not hearing it with the mic. Let's go to 60%. The nice thing about these big coolers is they have big fans and big fans do not make as high pitch of a sound, which is usually what's intrusive in your system. So the fact that they are bigger, like 100 millimeter fans, means that they are not going to be as loud as an intrusive, an intrusive when they get fast. They will be loud when they're at full speed because they're like 3000 RPM, but they are not high pitched. Remember those blower style coolers, what those sounded like? All right, just go to 75. Audible now, probably audible on the microphone slightly. If the side panel were on, it would be much more muffled, but you would still hear it. And then full speed. It's a slow ramp, which is kind of nice. So that's what that Starship sounds like at full speed. And you know what's funny? It's loud, but it's not terrible. Like the pitch, it's the pitch of the tone. It's a deep tone, not a high pitch like wee. It's more of a whoa, wee, whoa. Which would you rather hear? Neither, I'm sure. But still, if you had to, if you had to have one, this is what you would choose. Wee, whoa. Let's see what it boosts up to, shall we? So it's 2850. 2850 out of the box. 2835. So we dropped one boost bin. We dropped it at 44. So at 44C, we dropped a boost bin. And we're at 47C on 47. Look at that, it's flattening out at 47C. Yes, it's a DX11 load. No, it's not loading the RT cores or the tensor cores, which means it's going to be a lot cooler. There's 48. And that's at 30% fan speed. Now, what if I just max the power limit and temp limit? Nothing changes whatsoever because, again, we didn't up our voltage. Um, look at the wattage draw, though 230, 234, 232. The 4080. In terms of performance, it's such a better story than the 4090. It's just plagued with bad pricing. Let's just go like 150 on the core. Remember, I'm stuck with whatever stability I'm gonna have with voltage. There's 29.85, temperature jumped up to 52. So I'm gonna go ahead and manually set this to like 55 since it didn't go above 30. It had yet to ramp up the fans beyond its idle fan speed. By idle fan speed, 30% is the minimum speed to get the fans going. So that was just enough voltage to get them spinning. 52C plus 150 is 29.85. Let's go 200. There's 30.30. 30. Oh, there it goes. Yeah, so that's one of the things I'm finding with the 4080s that I've been testing is that uh, they're less stable at 3000 than 4090 is. And what's crazy about that is 4090 has over 7,000 more CUDA cores. Normally the CUDA core density leads to instability the higher you go with frequency because of bleed. It tells me that the 4080 is truly a binned 4090. That means the, 
doesn't matter. I mean, it's, it's, it's still super fast. It's just, it's surprising to me that the higher tier card is actually going farther in frequency on average too. And I, and I can't do anything about that because we are voltage limited. See, voltage limited, the one right there. So all that extra power limit does nothing. It does nothing for the card. So that 630 watt, that's a wow. But it's like, so what? You don't get more accelerator pedal. You can't, you, you can't. That just doesn't do anything. Cause look, what, what's the max power draw we pulled? 248.4 watts was the max power, total board power, by the way. That's the whole board. In fact, major correction here. I said 450, but this, the 450 was the, is the max design of the PCIe 5.0 plug with three eight pins plugged into it. 450 is like the limitation there in terms of the sense wires and stuff. But the card is only a 320 watt TDP card. I say only. If you compare the fact that that's what the 3080 was, and this is what the 4080 also is, um, it's insane what it's able to do. And, but, but it's only pulling 248 of those watts in this particular load. Let's go into um, Speedway. All right, so Speedway's running, as you can see now, look, yeah, there we go, 313.5, 312. So now we're pretty close uh, to our actual, and there we are. See how we're kind of bouncing off power limit now? Expected behavior, but we're still locked. Ah, oh, then we lost a couple of boost pins all the way down to 2805. Every time we hit power limit, we're gonna lose a little bit of, of boost bin there just because of the fact that the way it reduces power is by reducing its, its frequency. So there was a 2790. And in terms of the actual performance of this card, just completely stomping all over the RTX 3080 for the same amount of power. That's why I say that this is an amazing story of a card and its capability that's just completely destroyed by its price point. Because if you get 50% more performance, but it costs 50% more money, it's just a 50% faster 3080 for 50% more money. It, there's no extra value there at all. It just lifts the ceiling of what you're getting for the money. There we go. We got our boost bin back and look at our power limit now. It's going over hundred, 330 Watts is about what we're pulling here. And I'm curious as to if I can get this to like stabilize itself around 3000. So it's 2910, 2985. There's 3000 on the money right there. So it's 3000 megahertz, 58 C, 300. Oh, there's a crash. So this particular card doesn't seem to be too happy at 3000. And again, that's nothing against Zotac or the card. That's just Silicon Lottery. I mean, we're asking so much of it. 2830 is already an, over, an auto overclock with GPU boost. You know, to be honest, the way it looks, the way it sounds, it's clearly cool. Look how fast it brought it back down to the 29C. That is nuts. You guys, you guys know heat soak, right? So heat soak is where every component of the card absorbs heat. The PCB layers itself, all the memory chips, all the capacitors, all the, the, the um, diodes, everything on there is just hot. And now the cooler doesn't touch all of that. So what starts to happen is that heat then eventually makes its way into the parts that are being actively cooled. And then eventually that heat soak gets pulled out and it takes a while for that to happen. But for the card to come back down to 29C like instantly like that, tells you that it's just no heat soak. All right, there you go. Zotac Amp Extreme Aero. It's a really sleek card. Like it, okay, I, I use spaceships, but I also would have to say it has this sort of like a McLaren kind of a look to it. And, and I love that. I love that it's different. Of, of the gaudy designs that exist this time around, like it, the, the terrible, terrible designs. Zotac so far is near the top of the list for me in terms of the way they look, the way they perform. They give you a ton of extra power limit, which is unnecessary, but I guess nice to have. They could have made that 110 power limit instead of 140. I, I think it's more of a marketing thing to say, here we go to 140, but if, without voltage control, it makes no difference. But it looks good, it's silent, it doesn't sag. Overclocking, that's silicon lottery. My particular card here doesn't seem to like 3000 megahertz, at least not at the temperature, not at 60C. Maybe if it was colder, it would. Memory held 1200, but that's pretty much every GDDR6 module can hit 1200. Um, so nothing to really write home about in terms of silicon lottery, but a solid, solid card that performs very, very well. It's up to you to decide though, if the price of this card is worth that level of performance. The, the rumors are that we're not gonna see 70 cards until maybe January, 70, like 40, 70 cards until like January. And we may not even see 60 series cards people are rumoring until like Q2 of next year, which would be disappointing because I'd love to get that middle of the, it's still a high-end card, but the middle high-end card that's more affordable out there. But obviously Nvidia wants to sell as many of the money makers as they can before they offer you an alternative that's still probably faster than a 3080 at a much, much cheaper price. 
All right, guys, sound off down below how you feel about the Zotac Gaming Amp Extreme Aero amongst all the other cards that you've probably already seen. I already know how you guys probably feel about its pricing. So sound off down below. If you're gonna even consider a 4080, or are you holding off for AMD's 7900 XT and XTX that's also coming in just a couple of weeks?